Hey, welcome back Strike Eagle fans. Not so here for another tutorial for the F-15E Strike Eagle by Razbam. Today I thought we'd do something a little bit more fun and, and mix it up a little bit from the uh, previous tutorials that were more just kind of static uh, systems explanations. Today I'm going to take you on a little bit of a flight and uh, demo the navigation system and how the uh, Strike Eagle uses this, the navigation system to get around a route and how, uh, how we navigate between all the different points uh, on the route. Uh, I'm going to finish it up with a uh, uh, TACAN to an ILS uh, approach to a runway uh, just to show you how to then bring in the, uh, the other navigation uh, parts of that. Um, so let's go ahead and jump in and we'll, uh, we'll get, just get, let me just give a quick overview of what we're going to talk about. So right now we're sitting on the ramp at Nellis. Uh, we're going to do a, uh, a low-level route uh, into the uh, NTTR. So you can see that we're going to take off on uh, runway 03 out to the north. We'll do the uh, flex, three zero, uh, flex 3 VFR departure. It'll be a left-hand turn out to the west, and then we'll follow the route and jump on the range at steer 3, and then uh, hit the initial point. And we'll do a little bit of a bombing exercise uh, once we get onto the range uh, at steer 5 point. Uh, after that, we'll go ahead and recover to uh, Creech Air Force Base, do an attack in to an ILS approach uh, to, to runway 08 at Creech. So uh, let's jump in the back seat real quick. We'll give the Wizzo Union a little bit of love so you can see what the uh, back seat looks like. Uh, so again, you can see the same uh, route that we just talked about. And then uh, notice over here, I've got the uh, air to ground uh, packs set up. Uh, so like I said, we're gonna do a, a quick little bombing demo just as a teaser, but this is not gonna be the, uh, the main focus of the, uh, of the demo today. So I've got uh, 12 Mark 82, uh, rocking kind of old school uh, um, uh, dumb bomb stuff, so we'll uh, we'll show a delivery for that, and then um, uh, uh, Ripple Twelve here uh, with a uh, with an auto uh, uh, type of delivery. Again, I'm not going to go into any kind of uh, big detail here because I'm going to do another tutorial specifically on the packs and air to ground delivery, so I'm not going to get into any specifics on that. Uh, we've also got uh, two by two, so uh, two uh, AIM-120 Charlies. Uh, C5s and then uh, two M9 uh, mics uh, for the uh, air to air loadout today. So that's a that's a pretty good loadout. And if we uh, jump out to outside of the jet, we can uh, see that we're uh, we've got a beautiful Lake Knee tail uh, to uh, look there and uh, tail three through two. I this is actually my jet that I flew at Lake Knee uh, when I was a young lieutenant uh, back in the day. Cool thing is uh, we've got other uh, Discord members here on the uh, uh, F-15D Strike Eagle. And one of these guys actually flew this jet uh, almost 20 years later. I thought that, so I thought that was pretty cool. A uh, little bit of history and trivia for that. So this is what you're going to see on the uh, uh, configuration. So let's uh, go back into the, uh, the front cockpit for the takeoff. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go ahead and get airborne and um, uh, fly the route. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we uh, sequence between the different points. Uh, just before we take off, let me just give you a quick overview of the, uh, the HSI. So this is the horizontal situation indicator. Uh, right now, currently, I'm in nav ma or nav mode, nav steering mode. And what you can see is right now, I'm, I'm sequenced to steer point one alpha. And you can see that out here is displayed as a circle and a little dot. Uh, and I can zoom in, zoom out on the uh, HSI. Uh, it, right here, it gives me bearing and range, and if I once I get airborne and rolling, it's also going to give me uh, time data to that point, and I have the option of either using uh, ETA or ETE to the point. Um, up here, you can see the uh, the little uh, uh, navigation steering arrow. So this is the arrow that will point at the uh, the steer point, and then right here, I've got the command heading, uh, which will give me the instantaneous. Uh, uh, Heading to the to the point based on where I am right now, and this is also mirrored up here in the HUD. You can see the uh, little carrot up here with three two six uh, that also mirrors the uh, uh, this down in the HSI, and that also corresponds to the route uh, that I have here in the TSD. Uh, later on, I'm going to talk about the TACAN and the ILS stuff, but we're, we'll do that once we get close to the um, uh, landing at the at the at Creech Air Force Base. All right, so let's go ahead and blast off, and we'll uh, get the show on the road. So here we go. So I'm in uh, full burner right now. 
You can see the jet accelerates pretty quickly with the, even with the full ordnance on the jet. So we're going to probably rotate about 150 or so to uh, get airborne. So here we go. Nose is coming up. And gear's coming up. Flaps coming up just to try to keep from overspeeding the gear. All right, gear's coming up now. And we're back in burner. So one of the things we do is uh, we really uh, are conscious of the, the power that the 229s have. These things are beasts. Even with a heavyweight jet, they will accelerate. Uh, they'll get the jet accelerated very quickly. All right, so we'll uh, go ahead and level off here just below 3,000 for the flex departure. And we'll uh, turn out to the, uh, to the west now, picking up airspeed and uh, turn into steer point one. So you can see right now I've got it in the HUD right now, so I'm going to turn to a 285 heading. And then once I roll out, what you're going to see is the, uh, the steer point also has a line of sight cue in the HUD, very similar to other aircraft, uh, but it will also uh, show you once I'm in the field of view of the HUD uh, as, I, uh, as I approach that. So let me, uh, let me put it on pause just real quick, just to give you a couple uh, info here. So right now you can see I'm steering to steer point one. And up here right now I have auto sequence boxed at PB18. So I can deselect that with uh, PB18 either on or off to uh, auto sequence once I pass a point. So what you're going to see is, is once I fly over it, it's going to go ahead and flip to the next point uh, out in the distance. So that'll be pretty common for uh, other airplanes, but I just want to show, show you guys how it works in the strike you. All right, so coming up on uh, this point right now, I'll zoom in on the uh, TSD so you get a little bit better fidelity to uh, see what's going on. So we're coming up over the point right now. And it flipped, so now you can see it's auto sequenced onto the uh, to the next point, and I can line up with steering right there. So one of the criteria for the overfly for it to auto sequence is you have to be within uh, two miles of the point laterally uh, and cross the three nine line of the point. So basically, in essence, I don't have to overfly it exactly as long as I'm within two miles, either left or right of the point, it will go ahead and auto sequence. So what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and show you that uh, if, even if I offset the point a little bit, as long as I'm within two miles, it will go ahead and uh, auto sequence onto the next point. So I'll show you that real quick. Let's, uh, let's go out to uh, air to air master mode just to get a uh, usable picture. So I'm going to take command of the air to air radar. If you remember from previous tutorials, uh, take command uh, will show you that you're in command of that radar because you have the, uh, the little hash marks there at the bottom of the scope. So I'll go ahead and set up the appropriate coverage as we approach the point. So getting the uh, coverage set up, basically covering up to uh, about, 20, uh, about 22,000 or so uh, uh, if I set it out to about 20, uh, 20 miles. All right, so we're coming up at beam to point right now. You can see I'm within two miles, just barely right now, about 1.5 or so. So what you're going to see is basically just as, just as the uh, arrow crosses the point, right, as soon as it hits the three nine line, that's when it go ahead. That's when it goes ahead and auto sequences to that point. So now I'm turning on to the next point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on. Uh, turn auto sequence off and that'll show you if I overfly the point what's going to happen is it's now going to basically point uh, continue to point at the at the uh, steer point and then uh, I will have to manually sequence it onto the uh, steer point that I want to get it to so I'll show you that I think we talked about it, that in previous episodes but um, I'll go ahead and put that into practice as we fly around so you can see as I'm approaching the point right now even if I'm within two miles of the point, if I have auto sequence unboxed, as you can see right now, it will go ahead and just stay sequenced to that point. And then I've got to manually sequence it onto uh, steer four. Okay, so notice now it's, it's uh, now gone behind me. There's the point. So now I'm gonna go ahead and manually sequence over to steer four. So I'll put that in the scratch pad and go ahead and point that in. And now that's gonna give me steering to steer four. And then I'll go ahead and put auto sequence back on so that, uh, so that works appropriately. So I'm coming up on the IP right now. If you can see on the uh, tactical situations played TSD, 
what you're going to see, I'm going to put it on pause just real quickly, just to talk about it. So what you're going to see is as I cross over the IP, one of the cool features in Strike Eagle is if I have auto sequence boxed and I fly over the, uh, the steer point in air to ground master mode, it will go ahead and not only will it auto sequence, but it'll go ahead and make a target designation so I can go ahead and bomb it if I don't use any other systems to, to set up a designation. So it kind of does a, a two for one uh, deal there to, uh, to get the attack computer set up to go ahead and release weapons on that point. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, take us off pause. I'll put us on air to ground master mode. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and put us on uh, master arm hot. So what I'm gonna do here is you'll see that I'm gonna go ahead and uh, fly over the point and as soon as I do, it will go ahead and auto sequence and it will also then give me attack steering to the point. So there's the switch. And then you, now you can see, I know that I've got a nav designation or a designation of some sort. I'm gonna put on pause again, because now I've got target steering, whereas before it was nav steering to five point alpha, which is my target. And I've also got the diamond, uh, which also tells me that I'm designated. Uh, and I've got the ASL because I'm in auto um, uh, bombing mode for the, uh, for the attack. So what you're going to see here is I'm going to go ahead and do what's called a, uh, a low altitude toss or lat attack. So I'm going to do a pop to a lat uh, and release the weapons uh, through a dive toss uh, type of delivery. So what you're going to see me do is I'll climb up and then I'll pull down to about 10 degrees and then uh, roll out with my nose on the target. And it, at about roughly um, 15 seconds T-rail or about two and a half miles out, uh, I'll go ahead and, and start pulling up and I'll get the bomb release cue. Uh, as it comes down. I'll pause it real quickly just to show you what that looks like as I uh, come down the chute. All right, so we're, uh, we're heading on into the target. Now you can see that I've got master arm hot uh, as I selected it because one, I've got a gun cross in the HUD, but I've also got a PAX ready light here. So that also tells me that I'm ready to release weapons. If that ready light was not there, uh, I would not be um, able to release weapons. So coming up on our pop, we're going to be doing a direct pop at this time at about uh, just under um, five and a half miles. So here we go. So we're going to go ahead and pop. We're going to go to uh, pop 20 degrees up. And pulling down on the, uh, on the target. So there's my target. A little shallow, but not too bad. So now I'm on the pickle button, I'm pulling up and the bomb fall line is coming down. And as I come up, you can see the reticles flashing. That means all the bombs are gone. And you can see that happening right there. Uh, all the weapons are away from the, uh, from the packs. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and un undesignate just to get steering to the next point. I'm gonna thumb back to auto guns and I'm gonna uh, put the guns uh, coverage into the turn so I can uh, sanitize my uh, turn off target uh, as I uh, go on to the next point. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, get away from the target. I've got auto guns now off the nose. We're gonna let that run for a couple frames and then I'm gonna push out to uh, uh, SRM. So it goes out to automatic 20 mile scope uh, because I've got that program as I go ahead and sanitize my, uh, uh, my coverage out on the nose just to make sure there's no bandits. So it looks like I've got a uh, search radar on the nose. So I'm gonna go ahead and thumb out to uh, MRM. It looks like I've got possibly a, 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 a hostile on the nose. Let's go ahead and get a, a lock on this guy. So I've got a, a lock on a, a target just under 20 miles. Looks like he's a, a hostile. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, punch the tanks off. So the tanks are gone now. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and start shooting at this target. So he's uh, 14 miles away. I'm going to go ahead and get a good loft, get shooting at this guy, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, start cranking away to get a to get a, a good f pole maneuver going to uh, minimize his uh, his uh, weapon's ability to take a shot at me. So what you what you can see is I've got the target in single target track. Right now I've got an Amran launched, and we're in the in the expanded azimuth mode for the radar, which I'll go into more detail, obviously, uh, later on. So uh, 
coming under 20 miles. Looks like I got a uh, kill right now. So go ahead and flush that. Go ahead and flush the radar. And then uh, I'll go ahead and uh, start sanitizing again out in front of me as, uh, as I go out. This looks like a, a good off target. You can see I've got a, a good splash on the bandit right here. So uh, one Russian uh, MiG-29 is toast uh, coming off target. Sucks to be him. All right, so anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, call that a uh, knock it off for the tactical scenario. And now we're going to go ahead and get set up for the uh, recovery back to Creech. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start slowing down. And uh, I'm going to go into nav master mode. So I can now get some uh, essay and information on where I'm going uh, in there. So right now, if you can see right now, uh, steer 7 is the, uh, is the ILS start point, And I've also got steer 8 is the uh, end of the runway for Creech. So what I'm going to do here, we're coming up on uh, steer 6. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it on, uh, on pause just briefly. We'll go ahead and manually select steer 7 so I can uh, overfly that. So now you can see that the nav steering mode has switched over. And now I'm going to go ahead and start getting something set up for the, the TACAN to an ILS approach set up. So right now, notice right now I've got the, uh, the TACAN is off. It's showing off right here. So I'll go ahead and put Creech in for the, uh, the TACAN. So there's... 87 X-ray, and you can now see that it's turned on. And uh, if I zoom out, you can now see I've got my steer point is now visible, as well as the TACAN location is now visible, which is back over here on the uh, the TSD. So that all lines up with the uh, the, the bearing range uh, on that. Now I'm going to go ahead and get the um, uh, the ILS set up. So TACAN one is on the menu one page. Uh, if you remember, ILS is on the menu two page. So I'll put in the uh, the TACAN, uh, I'm sorry, I'll put in the Creech uh, ILS, so 1087. Notice I don't have to put a, a decimal point in there for the uh, for the TACAN, and that is now set in for that. However, notice because I'm still in nav steering mode, I'm not getting any of the TACAN information up there. So let's go ahead and switch over to TACAN. So once I do that, now I've got the TACAN course steering bar will now appear. Uh, and I can go ahead and get this set up for the for the approach. So 079 is the uh, is the Creech uh, runway 08 course. And personal technique, I always like to put in the runway heading as well. So I'll put in 079 uh, into the uh, into the heading bug. And if you notice now, now that I'm not in nav or nav steering mode, this changes from command heading to just a heading bug. So now I can put in whatever heading I want to. And that will help me remember to turn to a 079 heading uh, once I turn inbound to the course. And I'll talk about the ILS once we're on final here. So let's go ahead and start flying again. And I'll go ahead and start intercepting the um, tacking course as I climb up here uh, to get back on to a, a normal altitude after the, tech, after the tactical portion. So if you look down here, you can see I'm about 14 miles out from the airfield and about um, five miles out from the from steer point seven, which is the uh, ILS uh, steer point. Let's go ahead and start pulling the power back. We'll start slowing down to uh, start intercepting the, the tack in inbound for this. Typically, we fly approaches around uh, 300 to 350 at the most. So I'll go ahead and slow down to about 300 while we uh, intercept the, the tack in course. What I don't want to do is I don't want to put the ILS course in too early because that's much more sensitive than the tack in. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, fly about 300 knots. We'll go ahead and uh, fly this course to intercept the tack in. So you can see right now I'm on an intercept course to the tack in. And then uh, once I'm within about a half a dot, I will go ahead and start uh, turning to intercept the uh, 079 course to roll out on the runway heading. Okay, so that worked out nicely. Slowing down to nice airspeed. So again, I'm about 11 miles out. So right now I'm gonna put it back on pause just real quick, just so I can talk about the uh, ILS itself. So right now you can see I'm on tack end steering. This, uh, the little dots right here represent five degrees. Uh, each of those are five degrees of, uh, of, of uh, deflection off of, the, off of the course. And that's also mirrored in the HUD up here. So you can see this is a mirror image of the uh, of the HSI right here and this little arrow right here is the equivalent of this course bar 
uh, as we go. And then this longer bar right here is the, uh, is the command steering line. So right now you can see I'm lined up on the course. The data block in the HUD also matches the data block right here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about how I'm gonna fly in ILS. So right here you can see this ILS T or ILS N. And the only difference here, they're exactly the same with only one exception, is the T means that it's gonna use the TACAN distance. And the N it means it's gonna use the, the steering, the nav steer point distance to whatever I have selected. So if you had the foresight to go ahead and put a, a steer point down on the runway, this probably is going to be the more accurate version, depending on where the tack end is on the runway. Sometimes the tack ends are halfway down the field. Sometimes they're, they're far into the runway. So oftentimes the tack end doesn't give you the best distance information to the end of the runway. Whereas if you put a, a steer point right on the end of the runway, this will give you much more fidelity. So you can see right now, if I zoom in, you can see that this is about a mile difference between the tack end and the nav uh, steering to the end of the runway. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the, the uh, ILS N, and that will now change the distance up in the HUD to the, to the nav distance. And notice also I have the C-set will flash for about five seconds to also let me know that I have a 079 course set in. Just in case I forgot to set it, uh, that flashing will be the, uh, the reminder to go, hey dummy, go ahead and set the, the proper course in for your ILS. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and fly. So what we're going to do is at about uh, 6.9 miles out, we'll go ahead and configure the jet to um, uh, get the gear and flaps down and uh, go ahead and start flying the ILS approach. So there's the uh, ILS uh, glide slips coming in now. I'm going to go ahead and start uh, slowing down to on speed, uh, getting below 250 so I can put the flap, gear and flaps down. So I've got the boards out now, slowing down below 250. So just on time, there's uh, 6.9 miles gear and flaps coming down. And I'll put on pause just real quick to show you something because this is a really important thing to look at is notice when I put the gear down, that uh, uh, airspeed and altitude box and the data block all drop down, uh, down here lower in the HUD so I can see it better. It used to be up here. Now it's down a little bit lower because the reason is because now the jet uh, AOA is now, uh, the nose is now angled up for the approach, uh, and all your ILS and information is down, you, typically in the lower one-third of the HUD. So by bringing these data blocks down, it actually allows your eyes to, to now do your instrument scan a little bit better without having to look further up into the HUD to pick up all this data. So that's why those drop down uh, as, uh, as I do that. So get, getting back onto the uh, ILS course now, again, slowing down. The cool thing now is I don't need any of the performance charts to fly a uh, correct on-speed approach because now the AOA, so if you look up here, the AOA is, uh, is what I need to be able to fly my speed, and that's gonna take into account whatever weight I am for the, um, for the approach. So whether I'm light or heavy, if I fly about a uh, 20 to 22 unit AOA approach, that's gonna put me pretty much on-speed be able to fly the approach and land at the correct airspeed. So we'll start slowing down to about 20 to 25. There's no rush as long as I get there just before the runway, uh, just so I'm not too fast as I, as I get down there. So this is all looking pretty stable. I'm on, on speed right now, somewhere between that 20 to 22 units, and the uh, flight path marker is, uh, is just short of the runway a little bit, getting back down to a uh, glide slope. Making a little bit of course correction to the left and coming up a little bit high, getting back on course and on glide slope back to the runway. Put a little bit of trim in here just so I don't have to hold the, the back stick pressure. Continue to work the throttles and the uh, and the, the fly path marker to the runway. Pretty much on speed right now. Again, I'm still in that 20 to two, 22 unit range. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and take over visually. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the flight path marker just a little bit into the under run, just short of the uh, threshold. That'll be a good uh, point for me to begin my flare as I, uh, as I approach the runway. Getting a little bit slow here, sinking a little bit, adding a little bit of power. Flight path marker's just a little bit into the runway now as I go into my normal flare. Boards are out now. And I'm working now on to the, uh, to the a good uh, AOA 
to uh, air brake. We're on, uh, down the runway now, so uh, we're uh, safely on the runway, nose is down. I'm gonna go ahead and start working over to the cold side of the runway. This is primarily so if you have a wingman that's uh, landing behind you, so if he overcooks the landing, you always have a, an out for the wingman to uh, roll by you uh, if he, uh, if he uh, ends up uh, not able to stop behind you. All right, so I've got the stick in my lap as the uh, airplane slows down. Brakes are still out, so I'm gonna go ahead and start getting on the brakes and uh, bring this thing to a stop as we uh, get to the end of the runway. And a good technique is uh, go ahead and make sure you get the boards in and the flaps up before you exit the runway. Otherwise, uh, people will make fun of you uh, if they're uh, watching you as you taxi off the runway. So that is it for my uh, quick flight. Hope you guys enjoyed it. That's a uh, quick navigation tutorial in a nutshell with a little bit of other uh, added stuff in for teasers. Again, I'm going to get into a lot more detail on future tutorials for the air-to-ground uh, delivery stuff as well as the air-to-air -air attack stuff. So uh, lots more stuff to come in terms of tutorials, and we'll get into a lot more detail on that stuff. All right, guys. Uh, not so out. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll uh, talk soon. Hit me up on Discord if you guys have questions. See you later. Bye.